Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Well, on that note, here's uh, the other story that we're tracking for you today. The rains have continued to wreak havoc in many parts of Kerala as the state faces its worst floods in almost a century. The death toll has risen to over 320 people in the last nine days. Flight operations remain suspended at the Cochin International Airport, while public transport has collapsed in many parts of the state. The state government has declared a red alert in all of the 14 districts. Landslides and floods continue to be reported from Idiki, Kori Kot and Malapuram. The Defence Ministry has rushed in fresh teams from all three wings of the armed forces for relief and rescue operations. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will also be visiting the flood-ravaged state later today. He'll also undertake an aerial survey of the flood-ravaged areas. CNN News 18's reporters who are in various parts of Kerala have brought us these ground reports. This particular town is completely inundated. As you can see behind me, this place is completely flooded. This is the town called Pandalam in Patanandita district. This has been inundated since yesterday. In fact, there is a river uh, flowing just across and that river has completely overflown and the water has come inside the town for several kilometers. <laughs> So, Lord, no electricity, no water, people stuck in a two-storied building where 40 people are living. Now, apparently, police officials and some rescue people have just gone in, but they are still uh, standing on the terrace waving for help. Although several thousands have been rescued, there are still many isolated parts in Patanantita where the rescue and relief operations are yet to reach. I'm standing at the Kerala Tamil Nadu border, the route that passes towards Kollam district of Kerala. The movement along this route is also restricted at this point to just two wheelers or autos. There were strong winds last night too that led to falling off several trees in the region following which the vehicular movement is restricted. And considering the number of trees that are standing tall along these routes, the danger that could fall upon the passengers, the movement along this route is also restricted. Thereby, this region also being cut off from the rest of the country, like other parts of Kerala. Meanwhile, insurance regulator ADA has also issued instructions for easier claim settlement in the flood-hit state of Kerala. Yash Shen joins us now to take us through those details. Yash, what has the regulator communicated to the insurance companies to ease the situation there? Well, Ritu, looking at the kind of impact which uh, the tragedy has had on human lives as well as the kind of property damage which it has done, the insurance regulator has also come out and given a sort of an advisory to the insurers to make sure the claim registration and settlement process can be done as fast as these insurance can really, you know, manage to do. Uh, also, in terms of, uh, you know, the points to be followed as far as settlement is concerned, they have said that a similar model as 2015 Chennai floods uh, should be considered and followed by these insurance companies. Some important important points out of which are that if there's a claim uh, involving, let's say, a loss of life where uh, you can't really get a death certificate due to non-recovery of body, then again, the Chennai model should be followed. Uh, also, uh, relaxations from these insurance companies wherever possible in terms of paperwork uh, when it comes to claim settlement should be given and these insurance companies should consider that particular aspect as well. Also, details of special camps which will be put up for the claim settlement process should be publicized widely when it comes to print media, digital media or be it broadcast so people should be aware about these camps uh, so that they now after facing uh, so much of damage and tragedy are not really you know don't have to face the problem of going uh, door to door when it comes to the claim settlement process oh yes thank you very much for bringing us those details so ada they're setting special camps to ease the settlement claims of the flood hit state now to help those that have been stranded in kerala and provide a platform for donations the state government has an announced the chief minister's distress relief fund if you would like to contribute, donations can be made by either check, demand graphs or internet banking at donation.cmdrf.kerala.gov.in. The helpline numbers have also been made available for those that are stranded. Those numbers are on your screen. Do take note of them.
Welcome back to Reporters Diary. Now on to action on the Dalal Street then where bulls regained control after yesterday's consolidation and recouped losses. The Nifty ended at record levels aided by gains of 86 points and the Sensex rallied to 84 points but ended shy of the 38,000 mark. Bank Nifty regained the 28,000 level but it is still 200 points shy of record closing high. Mid-caps rallied more than a percent in today's trade. The gains pushed Nifty, Sensex and Bank Nifty into positive territory for the first time for the week. Well, here's a CNBC TV18 exclusive. The Theresa May government has launched the largest IT contract by any country so far. The £3.2 billion contract aims to radically transform the country's railways. This contract also assumes significance because the United Kingdom has also resorted to spending cuts for the last eight years. Kritika Saxena, who broke that story, joins us now with more details. Kritika, which Indian companies intend to apply for this contract? It'll be a huge one. Well, you know, the number and the amount says it all, uh, 3.2 billion pounds. And this is the largest uh, uh, government contract that has ever been released by any government till date. So what we understand is that uh, the deal is essentially for end-to-end -end transformation, digital services across the board uh, uh, for UK railways. So what they're going to do is they are going to come out with either one or multiple uh, contracts which will ensure that the entire UK railway system is completely overhauled in terms of digitizing. So there will be a lot of a new tech that is going to be involved here, be it infra services, analytics, big data, cloud computing. So there are several parts that will come in. That's still being worked out. But here's what's important. Uh, they have asked for RFQs. Now in UK, they typically first invite prospective IT players and those are the preferred uh, uh, players that they are interested in. And after a month or so, they invite it open for public. So we understand from our sources that TCS is the only Indian IT player that has been invited to bid for this. Uh, after a month, we learned that uh, players like India Infosys, ACL Tech, Wipro are also likely to throw their hat into the ring. In terms of timeline, um, this is likely to begin, uh, the bids are likely to begin around December 20. Uh, 18 or Jan 2019. So by the time the deal is actually uh, actually begins, it should be May 2019. It's a 10-year uh, project. So the kind of annualized revenues that come in based upon how large the contract is and how it's broken up is going to change. But uh, uh, yes, it should at least ensure once the money actually comes in, it would bring in at least 200 to 300 million dollars on an annual basis, even if the contract is broken up. So a huge deal. And the fact that the UK government is now going out inviting Indian IT players is big. The fact that they are doing a big a deal this big after eight years of cost cutting is also very significant and good news for the IT sector as a whole. Well, good news for the IT sector and an even better one if some of them are able to secure this long contract. Kritika, thank you very much for bringing us those details. Now, here's a story from the aviation space. Then, first up, the Air India Board held its meeting in Delhi today to discuss ways to revive the cash strapped airline. Corporate bigwigs YC Deveshwan and Kumar Manglambilla, who were inducted into the board earlier this month, also attended today's this meeting. Ashpreet Sethi joins us now with more details on the story. Ashpreet, today's meeting was the first for Deveshwan and Bella. Take us through what the key highlights were. Well, there was a crucial Air India board meeting that happened today. Now, this is for the first time that YC Deveshwar, uh, the ITC uh, uh, top management, and of course, uh, Kumar Manglam Virla were present at the meeting. Kumar Manglam Virla was part of the meeting through a video conference while YC Deveshwar had come down to Delhi for this meeting. In a bite, he's saying that it is like homecoming for him because remember, he was the Air India chairman almost over 20 years ago. Now, what we did pick up from sources in the morning was that during the board meeting, uh, there were discussions discussions held as far as wavering of certain loan amount is concerned. Remember, the debt is over to the tune of 45,000 odd crores. And also as to what kind of lease that has been given to uh, aircraft holders. Remember, Air India officials have been saying that, that they are going through a lot of issues as far as paying EMIs towards these loans are concerned. They are taking cost-cutting measures. However, there has to be a solid uh, step taken as far as equity infusion is concerned. Remember, the uh, Secretary of Civil Aviation uh, Ministry, RN Chaube had said that 2,000 crore rupees will be coming in soon in phases. Air India CMD had told us day before yesterday that salaries have started coming in. But it remains to be seen whether any proposal has been cleared at this Air India board meeting, which had two top corporate management people part of the board meeting.
No, absolutely, Ashwai. Thank you very much for bringing us the details. Now, here's another one from the aviation space. Jet Airways continues its drive to shed excess baggage to curb its inflated debt. CNBC TV18 now learns that Jet Airways is in talks with TrueJet to sublease seven of its ATR aircrafts for a period of five years. Now, TrueJet is looking to take these aircrafts on a wet lease basis, which means essentially that employees, maintenance, and engineering will be provided by Jet Airways. Utkash Chaturvedi has broken the story and is standing by with more details. Utkash, Jet continues with its debt reduction drive, and here's another step towards that. More than debt reduction, what will come to play uh, in this exercise will be the regular cost reduction. Uh, now, what we are picking up from our sources is that this deal is in the final stages and announcement uh, can come, say, in the next two to three weeks. Now, what uh, is the deal here is that uh, uh, seven aircraft, seven ATR aircraft will be subleased to TrueJet. That means that even Jet Airways has those aircraft on lease, but they'll be subleasing that aircraft uh, to TrueJet. But what is more important is that these seven aircraft will go on a wet lease. Now, what is a wet lease? A wet lease is the maintenance, the engineering, and the ground, the ground handling. Also, the cabin crew and pilots will be provided by JET itself, and that is a bigger opportunity. So, more than debt reduction, what comes into play is one that we had told you earlier as well that three to four ATRs, which were working on the loss making rules for JET Airways, were grounded. So, now they will be put to use, and money will come from them. Also, speaking about paying salaries to employees, so you know, given the fact that these are on wet leads, a lot of salaries from uh, of the employees which, which, which will be working for, for, for TrueJet uh, will uh, come from the same. Uh, so this is one of the exercises which Jet Airways is really looking to do, uh, but this is a beginning. Uh, if you look at uh, the other exercises, what we are picking up is that the company is looking uh, to sail and lease back its wide bodied aircraft, see, even though this process will take some time because uh, the aircraft are a bit old. But this is one of the process, the, kick, the process at least has kick-started when we spoke to TrueJet and Jet Airways for response. TrueJet said that we are in talks with Jet Airways uh, for wet leasing of aircraft. What Jet Airways told us is uh, that we continue to evaluate all possible alternatives to ensure optimum utilization of its fleet. But owing to quiet period, we are unable to respond to further specific queries. All right, Utkarsh, we'll leave it at that. We'll take a very short break on the show now. But coming up, we get you an exclusive chat with former South Africa. Welcome back, you're watching Reporters Diary. Now, come 2020, surfing is all set to become an Olympic sport. Now, this comes as good news for India's surf hubs and clubs that have seen passionate surfers ride the waves. But do India's young surfers dream of an Olympic debut? CNBC TV 18's Jude Sanath finds out. Given the fact that surfing is now an Olympic sport and you have so much Indian talent on display here at Koblong, as it always has been, what are the prospects really? I want you to be very honest with me as far as Indian surfers are concerned at the international level. Well, I, th I think the, the, the biggest problem is that is, there's not a very big surfing infrastructure. I mean, surfing is itself, it, it's, it's quite a small sport. It, it, it doesn't have, it's got mass popularity around various parts of the world, but from a specialization, not so easy to get to the next level. So I think what what surfing requires in India, and it's great to see we've got judges from the Maldives, from Sri Lanka, we've got participants from Bangladesh, from Maldives, um, from Sri Lanka, and obviously local surfers up and down the coast from Vizag, um, from Mangalore, so not just from Tamil Nadu. Now with as many people as we can get um, w from, you know, from Indonesia, from Bali, and from Australia now even, uh -huh. um, guys from New Zealand, we've got head judge from Australia, uh -huh. all that combined knowledge will help Indian surfing grow. I have to ask you also, what is so good about the Chennai coastline that makes surfing so conducive to this geography really? Well, I think there's, there's very different kinds of breaks. So what, what you see here, we have is a point break, mm -hmm. um, it, you know, because you've got these uh, bays that, that keep going. So it's what, not one long straight coastline. Right. And that's the difference. You know, many parts of South Africa, it's just one long straight coastline. Mm -hmm. But these little bays that you have, obviously a lot of the fishing villages use the bays to get in and out of the ocean. Right. It also does create a great way for surfers. So ample opportunity. Happy surfing? Cricket comeback expected on the cards? <laughs> Would you pick up the bat again and leave the surfboard aside for a bit? Well, Actually, I did some uh, a video footage the other day, and, and it involves some some catching and some diving around. And, and I realised that I can I can still dive. It's the landing that's the problem. So which is why I choose the ocean. It's way softer to fall a off much my softer landing. Way softer to fall off my surfboard. So uh -huh. so yeah, no cricketing comeback. This 
body, it, it's done its bit. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm passionate about the game. I love watching it. I love following it. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm not a guy that's uh, dusting off the, the old, the old uh, cricket bat. No, not at all.